Welcome little scientists and authors. It's Miss Gisa. And today I have a very special guest. I have Amy Talian, author of Sophie the Sea Otter. And here's her book. Amy is a wildlife biologist who studies animals and animal behaviors. And this is our first time having a, a scientist with us. Welcome, Amy. Hi, thanks for having me. I'm super happy to be here. Thanks for taking the time to be here to tell us about your book and tell us about what you do. Um, you've studied a lot. You've studied brown bears, wolves, um, and North American snow leopards. And you've done, oh, tell me, tell me. Not in North America. They're actually in Eurasia. So Mongolia yeah. and Kazakhstan. That's what I thought. Yep. I didn't know there were snow leopards here, but I thought I'd heard <laughs> that it was North America. So thank you for- You're welcome. Thank you for correcting me. I was kind of like, hmm. Um, and you've done so much research and are a Fulbright scholar um, and started our world of wildlife to educate children and adults about ecology science. Yeah. Um, so tell us more about what does a wildlife biologist do? Sure. I mean, well, you know, on the face of it, we study wildlife and we study nature. Um, and this means we try to understand how animals interact with each other and how they interact with their environment or the world around them. Um, Cause there's a lot of, you know, like connections there, right? They don't just live independent of one another. They live together and so they affect each other. Um, so that's kind of what we do. Um, what that means practically is, you know, there's a huge range. Part of it is we spend time out in nature and whatever system we're studying. So sometimes, you know, I'm in Yellowstone uh, looking at stuff there, going in the field, which means walking in the woods and collecting data. Um, and that can look like so many different things. You know, data collection can be um, collaring a wolf and then following it around, uh, you know, through um, GPS points to see what happens or um, even collecting, you know, wolf scat, which is basically wolf poop. You can actually <laughs> learn a lot from wolf poop. <laughs> um, so that we can be in the field, walking around in nature, and then we come back to our offices and our computers um, and we do some math and we look things up and we try and figure out what's going on and um, write this into papers so that other people can learn from, from what we did. How did you choose biology and then specifically the area of animals and their behaviors? Yeah, sure. You know, I, I guess I would say I probably chose animal behaviors first and then biology mm -hmm. kind of came along with it. Okay. Um, but so when I was, uh, when I was, uh, young, I actually moved out to Yellowstone and volunteered for a season. So Yellowstone National Park is in Wyoming, um, in the American North, uh, uh kind of bitter mountain West, Northwest. Um, and I'm from Chicago. So, so I'm, am I. are you really? Yes. <laughs> nice. <laughs> yeah. So I was more of a city girl, you know, Me too. Um, and then I moved out into the woods and I fell in love with it. I fell in love with Yellowstone. Um, there are bears and wolves and bison and, you know, all these different species and animals that used to be across like a lot of North America that aren't anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and it was fascinating. It was just cool to watch, cool to be there. Uh, and so I worked there for a long time, um, almost 11 years. Uh, you became I a ranger. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yep, I was a park ranger studying uh, bears and bison, mostly. Okay. So um, I kind of did a bunch of field work. I was in the woods all the time, hiking around, skiing around, um, yeah. collecting data on animals and watching them and learning. Um, and then I decided to go back to school for it. You know, I just became fascinated about it. And um, it seemed like something that I could do on the long term. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Well, the Junior Ranger program is one of my favorite things about the National Park. So it's it's fun Absolutely. that I get to speak to a, ranger, a former ranger too. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. the Junior so, Ranger program is super fun. It's oh, a really it's cool thing to amazing. Do National Park. amazing. Yeah. So what's a fun fact that you want to share with us from your research about brown bears and wolves? Well, 
you know, I was thinking about that. And I think one of the neatest things, you know, I was talking about like, um, you know, what a wildlife biologist does and what we study. And we study these interactions, like how animals interact with each other. Uh, and one of the coolest things about wolves and bears is that they interact with each other too, and they affect each other, right? So um, they they live to, together across a lot of their range. So that means where the animals live across different continents and spaces, they live together a lot of times. Um, but just because they live together doesn't mean they don't affect each other. They compete right. with each other. Right. Um, and they compete with each other mostly for food, mm-hmm. right? Um, and it's interesting. So some of the research I was just doing um, was looking at this as this kind of competition between wolves and bears and what that means. Um, and really, you know, wolves kind of help bears out. Wolves go and, you know, make kills on the landscape and, and eat elk. And then the bears will come in and like take them, steal them from them. Right. So so bears are kind of helping wolves or sorry, wolves are kind of helping bears out. Um, but bears don't really help wolves too much they come in and steal their food um and so imagine like your bigger brother coming in and just taking <laughs> the dinner plate away, right that's right. what bears are doing to wolves yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, but bears are also they're scrappy they fight back you know they're not necessarily willing to just let that big brother take their food away so they kind of hang out and try and you know gain access to their food also and there's this just super dynamic like always changing interactions that happen um and that's pretty cool that is it's it's fun to hear i hear your enthusiasm and so it's fun to hear (laughs) from you because it's like wow it is really fascinating yeah um the relationship yep and i never really thought about it before yeah exactly a lot of people don't you know they just think wow they live together in the same area so they must you know, not affect each other too much. Exactly. Uh, but you know, you live together in the same house as your big brother. That doesn't mean there aren't, you know, things that happen. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So what inspired you to write your first book, Sophie, the sea otter? Yeah. So I came from, you know, um, the park service. I was a ranger. I did a lot of field work. I did a lot of, um, I did a lot of data collection and monitoring wildlife populations, but I also talked with the public a lot, you know, Mm -hmm. um, I did interpretation it's called in the parks. Um, so I was there explaining things all the time. And when I went back to school, um, to do my PhD, which, uh, I, I kind of realized that, you know, at that higher level, they weren't very good at bringing their information back to the public and yeah. that really kind of annoyed me. <laughs> um, and I, you know, so I decided to, that's what you were so used to. I mean, that's what you did as a park ranger. Yeah. And that's why yeah. it matters. You know, the public wants to know about these things. It's right, interesting right. and it's important yeah. to share, you know, share what we've learned. Yeah. Um, and so I, uh, I, I'm really into it, it, the science side. It's called broader impacts. And that just means um, bringing your research to the public, you know, okay. making it worthwhile. Mm-hmm. Uh, but for this specifically, I thought, you know, it's just so important to learn about ecology and ecosystems and the environment. I know those are all big words, but about this, about how nature works from a young age, you know, because it, it's cool, one. Yeah. And two, it's important, especially in these times where so many things are happening and nature is being affected by humans and climate change and all sorts of stuff. Yeah, um, it's just uh, it's important to to start teaching kids young how this yeah. stuff works, what it means. Yeah, and we're all interconnected, like everything, mm-hmm. and everything. and that's what I love about Sophie the Sea Otter is you see the impact. I'm, I don't want to give away too much, but you see <laughs> the impact of what happens when one species goes away. Exactly. Yep. Yeah. 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 And that is that is kind of the definition of ecology is studying the interconnectedness of, you know, nature. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So in a nutshell, tell us a little bit about the story. <laughs> um, well, I, I think you kind of already, you know, <laughs> hit the nail on the head, but it's, it's essentially about, in, in science terms, it's about something called a trophic cascade. And I write that at the end of the book, and I try and explain what that means a little bit. But, um, you know, in the book, I don't use those words so right. much. I just talk about how um, 
what happens when a predator, um, because sea otters are predators, what happens when a, an apex predator um, disappears? And, and kind of what happens is, you know, their, their, their prey populations are no longer regulated by their, their predator. Um, and then that has all sorts of consequences for the environment yeah. that they live yeah. in, right? Um, huge consequences. And then, you know, at the end, we see what happens when, when those predators are brought back. And there's lots of examples of this in nature. So there's, you know, sea otters, the sea otter kelp forest ecosystem is one example. Um, wolves are another example. Uh, mm -hmm. Other different um, apex predators, you know, they, they affect their landscape in a really important and cool way. Um, but they're also disappearing. So yeah. um, that's a huge conservation is issue for sure. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And it's such a, it's a, it's a big concept, but I love how you brought it down to like this really, this book is really great for kids as young as preschool. Um, and then obviously into elementary school, but you know, you, you added rhyme to it and um, it's, it's easy for young kids to understand uh, the way you wrote the story yeah, and, well, and had it illustrated. That, that makes me happy. I mean, that was the point, right? It's yeah. not getting anywhere if you can't, if it's not a concept that's translatable. And that can be really yeah. hard because some of these concepts are complicated, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. And then the rhyming part, I, you know, my, my favorite author as a child was Dr. Seuss. And I just right. wanted to replicate that because it, I still buy Dr. Seuss books for anybody who's having a kid anywhere. So <laughs> yes. that's like my go-to gift. Yes. Kids love rhyme and teachers love rhyme because it's, you know, it's, it's what we use to, it's the, it's one of the building blocks, of phonemic awareness, which, you know, for reading and decoding, it, it just goes right hand in hand with that. So yeah, um, yeah that's, that's, Great. And if you guys want to listen, um, Amy gave me permission to read her story, Sophie the Sea Otter. And um, I'll Absolutely. also list below how you can get your own copy so you can follow along as I yeah. read the story. <laughs> so Amy, your website, uh, our world, ourworldwildlife.com yep. has such wonderful resources for families. Um, children can join scientific expeditions and watch nature notes. Uh, which are videos that the scientists have done about nature and wildlife. Um, tell us a little bit more because I, I, I was browsing it and I, I thought it was really fascinating and a great resource for families. Yeah, thanks. It's, um, you know, it's still, it's not as robust and big as I would like it to be. But another thing that I ended up doing, you know, when I was talking about this broader impacts of science, right? Another thing and another project I started working on was something called Expedition Science. Um, which is these field trips um, that come with educational content. So the kids can watch the videos and the, the educators can download the educational content and kind of follow along with researchers who are actually in the field. Um, so I got a little grant to do that. Um, I went that. to the Great Barrier Reef and filmed five videos um, that you can, you know, you can kind of watch independently as a kid or as a parent and kid team, you know. Um, Where can we find those, Amy? That is on the website. Oh, okay. The okay, website. great. Yeah, okay. under Expedition Science. Okay. Um, and there's actually more there than there is with Nature Notes. Nature Notes is a, another another thing I had an idea for, but I get a little ahead of myself when I have too many too many <laughs> ideas and not enough time. They're so. great ideas. They're great ideas. <laughs> Thanks. Yeah. Um, so yeah, so you can uh, you can go and look at that. It's, it's it should be called Expedition Science on the okay. website. Either that or it okay. says field trip to the Great Barrier Reef. Okay. Um, but the videos are up there and there's all sorts of content. And I was trying really hard to get a bigger program going and writing grants with the National Science Foundation. And it's, it's just really tough to get funding for these things. Okay. Um, but that's one of my, that's one of my goals is to continue that project if I can, but it good, requires good. resources to be able to do that. So well, be in touch. Cause I want to know if you, if you do that. Yeah. Yeah. So I can yeah. use those resources as well. Yeah, absolutely. There's one already out and it's, yeah, it's pretty fun. Good. Awesome. Are there, um, are there any new books or stories that we can look forward to that you're going to write next? Sure. I have one. Um, I wrote a book called Benny the Black Bear okay. and it's all about um, 
kind of food security in national parks. So, you know, you're not supposed to feed the bears and it goes right. into why and what happens when you do feed the bears. They all of a sudden are getting into picnic baskets and harassing people and it's not good. Um, and so yeah. I do have this book out, but I'm looking for a place to be able to publish it. So that's okay. a bit, that can be a bit challenging. Hopefully at some point in the future, it'll, you know, be available on bookshelves. Yeah. It, yeah. That's a, that's a great book. I haven't seen a book like that yet. And, um, I know that every time I go to the national parks, that's something that's in somewhere in that national park, um, you know, junior ranger book. Oh yeah. So, uh, I think it would be great to have that as a as a story that parents can read to the kids and yeah. you really understand, you know, cause you think, Oh, the bear's hungry. Let me give him some of my food. But like, yeah, yeah you, you really um, can't imagine like the repercussions of that. Yeah. The big consequences. And when I was yeah. working in Yellowstone as a ranger, that's, that was one of my main jobs was dealing with what happens when bears do get fed and yeah. it's not good for the bears. And so yeah. it's, you know, that's the thing. Feeding animals is actually, it, it, it feels good. It does. <laughs> it feels it does. good to do it because you want to help them and they're cool and you like them. But um, for almost any animal from bears to raccoons or, you know, wherever, yeah. wherever you're at, it, it's, um, it can have, can like really negatively affect those animals. And a lot of times they'll end up being caught and trapped and stuff and mm. taken away. So, yeah. Yep. Well, what other resources can children and families access to learn more about animals and their behaviors? Ooh, this is a tough question. Um, you know, I know there's heaps of things out there on the web and I have links to different places on our world of wildlife, uh -huh. but usually those are pretty specific, you know? So, I mean, I, um, for the field trip, for example, I have links to some other things you, some other routes you can go down to learn, um, about the Great Barrier Reef, for example. Right. Right. Um, That's great. And but, you specifically, you specifically have a YouTube channel and a website as well, right. That families can go to. Yeah, I have a, yeah, I have a YouTube channel. The YouTube channel is really kind of a house for, um, for those field trips that I made. So okay. I think there's, you know, maybe five to seven videos or no, okay. I ten. but yeah, there's the videos are on there. Those are the field trips. Um, and otherwise, you know, you might be a better resource than me to be able to say where to go on the internet for age appropriate content. Yeah. Know? Yeah. I just important. wasn't sure if you had other, um, other resources, yeah. uh, like your YouTube channel and other, other resources. Yeah. 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 Cause you There's also a have a website. Do you want to give everybody your website? My personal website? Yes. For Oh, uh, yeah. So I have two websites. One is Our World of Wildlife. Yeah. Um, that's ourworldofwildlife.com. And then I have another one that's just my personal, you know, website that talks about some of the research that I do and has it, my resume on there and, you know, all that kind of stuff. Um, and I, I honestly, it's some Wix website. So it's like Amy Italian, a bunch of letters, some backslashes, <laughs> you know. <laughs> um, but you can find that website in the Our World of Wildlife website. Yeah. It's in there. You can find that link. You just go to to my picture and it'll yes. say Amy's website. Yeah. Great, great. And I'll list everything uh, below as well because I found yeah. it that way as well. Great. Um, well, I have learned so much today and um, really, really have enjoyed talking with you and um, hearing about wildlife biologists yeah um and and I love the national parks and I love rangers and it, it's just been such a pleasure to um to have your book as one of the resources and, and just get to talk to you more so thank you you're welcome absolutely and actually because I just thought about this there's yeah. one research resource that you and anybody else might be interested in and it's called Skype a Scientist um Skype scientist Skype a scientist oh, Skype yeah. a scientist okay look them up in any classroom or you know any group can kind of have a scientist come in and talk about whatever you just choose topic and That's you can feel like scientist in you know like this talking on zoom or Skype or FaceTime, you know, all these different platforms, but that's great. I've never heard of that. That's a yeah. wonderful resource. Yep. Yep. And they're pretty big and they have got a whole group of scientists. I'm on there. Okay. Um, yeah. And you can have, you know, kid, kids come up with questions and you do that. It's fun. Wonderful. That's a great resource. Well, thank yeah. you. Thank you for You're sharing welcome. that with us. Yeah. Well, we hope uh, that you'll be back to talk about Benny the bear. 
sometime soon. I hope soon. so too. <laughs> All right. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. All right. Thanks. And we'll Take see you care. guys again next time. Don't forget to check out the story, Sophie the Sea Otter. Bye. Bye. Thank you for joining me today. Remember to like and subscribe to support our channel.